Good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, June 7th, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes at 7 p.m. Uh, we apparently have some microphone on, so I'll ask you to mute if you would, please. On the mute button. Or maybe the clerk will mute you, I don't know. Okay. Uh, tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of uh, North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archive video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will be only be given in exceptional circumstances when deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors, staff, and experts who are with us tonight and participating in the meeting. This time I invite your decorum as usual. I advise that I have no regrets. I think everyone's supposed to be here. Um, did did um, Kelsey Richardson make it in yet? He was, okay. So, Matt, we're glad you got back in time. I am here. Wonderful. Uh, let us uh, move then to item 2.1 on our agenda that pertains to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have already declared in writing, to verbally advise the chair in public session, and if they haven't already declared in writing, to submit documentation to this effect to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Uh, we have a few this evening that I'm aware of ahead of time. So uh, first we'll call on Councillor Anstett. Welcome to the meeting, Councillor Anstett, and to you. Thank you, Mayor Caseberg. Through you this evening, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.5.1, the accounts, specifically the daycare, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Anstead. Uh, next up, I'm aware of Councillor Burns. Welcome, Councillor Burns. You have the floor. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, I have submitted documentation to declare a conflict on 5.5.1, the accounts, as well as 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw, as I have grandchildren attending uh, several uh, North Perth daycares, as well as after school programming. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm, I'm mildly envious at that statement, Councillor Barron, is that the grandchildren part at least. Um, next up is Deputy Mayor Kellen. Welcome, Deputy Mayor. Yes, nice to see you again, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you, I'd like to declare pecuniary interest on item 5.5. Uh, one, the Perth Metals accounts, as my mother and father-in-law are tenants there. Also, the daycare accounts, as my grandson attends the St. Mary's Child Care Centre. And further to that, 13.1, uh, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And next up is Councillor Johnston. Welcome, Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I'd like to declare a conflict on item 4.1, the uh, Burnett Municipal Drain, as I am a... Uh, landowner on that drain, and also then 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. Uh, are there any that I'm not aware of that we should declare at this time? Seeing none, uh, let's explain our virtual processes. Uh, tonight I'll be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that will be put before us. I will do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so and I'll move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business tonight, councillors will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn 
uh, when called upon by me to deliver a primary question or comment, you may make one supplemental without intervention. We will follow speaking order carefully, and any councillor wishing to have a second kick at things will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I, if I believe that you're not audible, I'm not hearing you and your mouth is moving in the video, I will call on you. Uh, I uh, also ask councillors and, and other guests, including staff and our delegates, to maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our voting technology, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, and then return to me. That allows us to turn to item 2.2 on our agenda. The clerk has advised me of a desire to update the agenda for tonight's uh, closed session of council in particular, and I'm going to ask her to explain. So just let me set things here so we don't create a black hole. Council, tonight I'd like to amend the agenda by adding to your agenda number 11, your closed session, under the proposed or pending acquisition sale of land for municipal or local board purpose, property described as lots two, three, and four, plan 382 North Perth, and this is along Elma Street. And the second one is under litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the corporation or, or local board. And this is regarding the LPAT case PL 200461. Thank you, Clerk Fairfield. So, Council, I have a resolution for our consideration. It's uh, slightly adjusted from what you're seeing in East Cribe that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved as amended. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Mayor Kaysenberg, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Anstead, will you serve as our seconder for that one? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments, discussion, or debate on this? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you very much. That brings us to item three on our agenda. The so-called consent agenda, these items are placed uh, before us because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require council's recognition and action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and or individual action may do so. There are 12 items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for further discussion or action? If so, please indicate in the chat function. Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Good evening. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, provide additional information regarding uh, item 3.5 from the Blue Water Recycling Association. Thank you. We'll, we'll see if anyone else wants to have a go here and then we'll uh, we'll circle back, I think, just to make this easy. Anyone else uh, want to, wanted to pull anything from the consent agenda for discussion? Okay, I think uh, to make this easy, uh, Councillor Rothwell, why don't we call on you now? I, I'm not certain that uh, you're proposing an alternate course of action, but if you are, we can deal with that in the aftermath of our consent agenda um, items. So uh, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd. And this is just an update uh, from our uh, May meeting notes. Uh, members of council did receive uh, an update through uh, an email that uh, the province uh, last week uh, did uh, uh, approve the regulation for the implementation of the uh, new blue box or producer responsibility agreements. As I say, that was uh, Minister Urich uh, announced that 
uh, last week, I believe it was on June 3rd. So that's a significant step forward uh, and uh, certainly Blue Water Recycling Association is very happy to see that. And I believe that all municipalities throughout Ontario will be happy to see this as well. And I do note uh, AMO did uh, have a uh, response to uh, say that they are uh, excited to see the province stepping forward on this, which has been uh, approximately five years in the making. So I just want to provide that uh, update through to council directly. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Rothwell. Um, I do think that's pretty good news, actually. Um, I think there were a lot of nerves about that one. All right, uh, Council, anything else before we consider a motion on, on the consent agenda? Okay, we're not seeing anything, so I have a resolution for our consideration that is as follows. The consent items 3.1 to 3.12 be received for information and the minutes of the May 17th, 2021 regular Council meeting and the May 31st, 2021 special council meeting be adopted. Can I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for this one? Yes, I will move that motion. Thank you. Councillor Duncan, welcome. Would you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? Seeing no indication of same, let's have that vote. <clears throat> And that is carried, thank you very much. So that allows us to move on to item four on our agenda. Uh, tonight is a, another opportunity to become familiar with our drains, Council. We are scheduled now to hold three public meetings to consider drain matters in our municipality. To facilitate these public meetings, we must temporarily adjourn from our regular Council meeting. I have before me a motion to make that happen that reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adjourns at 7.13 p.m. for the purpose to consider drainage reports under the Drainage Act concerning the following. One, the Burnett Municipal Drain. Two, the Galbraith Drain Report. And three, the Holsworth Municipal Drain. Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for this one? Yes, I will make that motion, Mayor Todd. Thank you. And recognizing that Councillor Johnston has declared some conflict in this matter, uh, Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our seconder? I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that motion. And that is carried, noting the abstention of Councillor Johnston. Uh, with that, Council is temporarily adjourned. Now I have uh, some other facilitation duties. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome you and all those attending uh, to a public meeting uh, related to a drainage report. Uh, we're not aware that any assessed landowners are on this call with us, but some may be tuned in via our YouTube live feed, and so we welcome you as well. At this time, uh, we will hear a report from William Dietrich uh, of Dietrich Engineering Limited on this Burnett Municipal Drain. Mr. D Mr. Dietrich, welcome. You have the floor. Okay. Can, first of all, can uh, everybody hear me? We have you, yes. Okay. Let's make sure we're close enough to the screen this time. Yes, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, I'm going to present our drainage report that uh, our company has prepared on the, the Burnett drain. And maybe I'll just take a few minutes and just uh, review the, the scope of work for this project, which is, um, um, which is the purpose of this meeting. Um, a bit of background information on, I'm, uh, I'm always interested in history on drains, I've been at this quite a while, and uh, so I read all uh, existing drain reports before I prepare a, a new uh, report, but uh, just going back in history on this, on the Burnett drain, the, uh, the uh, latest report uh, when there was uh, uh, work done on the tile system, and, uh, we were appointed to uh, pr uh, prepare a report to replace the existing tile drainage system that was originally installed back in 1965 on a report by James A. Howes from Listowel. And uh, in that report, he provided for 3,121 feet of 10 inch 
a 14 inch diameter tile to be installed. And this, um, the drain was um, installed to serve parts of lot 30 to 34 of concession three and part of lot 32 concession four in the Elma ward. The uh, open portion of the, the drain, which is the outlet for this uh, uh, tile system uh, that's presently located in lots 31 and 32, was um, last cleaned out in its entirety under a report of prepared by R.J. Burnside back in 1983. And then recently there was a, an enclosure of approximately 24 meters of this open ditch just downstream or south of line 81. And that was done in 2019. Uh, our appointment by council uh, was on September the 21st of 2020 under section 78 of the Drainage Act to prepare uh, a report for repairs and improvements to this existing drainage system. We've had some uh, previous uh, meetings, uh, public meetings on this project uh, and uh, all landowners that were affected were invited to those meetings at a site meeting back in November of 2020 and recently in May, of four, May 14th of 2021 uh, we held an information meeting uh, on site. Um, after those meetings, we prepared our final drainage report and our proposal in this, in this report, uh, which is dated uh, May the 18th, 2021, will include uh, the installation of a new tile drainage system west of, uh, starting on the westerly side of Perth Road 147 to the property line between lots 32 and 33 of concession three. The length of this project is 930 meters of, of 525 millimeter, 600 mil, uh, millimeter diameter tile. It also includes a 20 meter length of 750 millimeter uh, uh, steel casing that'll be installed by the jack and bore method under Perth Road 147. The design drainage coefficient that was used to design this tile system was a one and a half inch rainfall in a 24 hour period. The existing tile drain then will be abandoned after this report is adopted. We're also providing for a clean out of 320, uh, 532 meters of open ditch in lot 30 of concession three. The area that's uh, shown on the plan there where it serves a drainage area of approximately 101 hectares, which is 249 acres of land. The estimated cost of this project is $184,800. This includes the construction Cost, the allowances that will be provided to the landowners under section 29 and 30 of the Drainage Act, as well as the uh, administration costs for the project. So that uh, uh, is uh, uh, an overview uh, then of what's, what's being proposed uh, in our drainage report prepared uh, by Dietrich Engineering. So if there's any questions from members of council, or if there's been any, any landowners um, uh, listening in, I would be pleased to answer those questions. Thank you, Mr. Um, let's, uh, let's turn to uh, the opportunity to ask questions at this time. Um, the clerk has advised me we do not have anyone on the phone who's registered to ask questions, uh, despite that opportunity being extended to them. So, Council, uh, the questioning is up to you. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask about this matter? Clerk Barefonts, are we seeing any indication of, uh, of council uh, uh, expression of interest? Okay, we're not. So at this time, um, then we are noting no significant concerns. Um, no questions have been asked of the engineer. And uh, at this time, it is appropriate then uh, to note that uh, following this public meeting, we will consider a provisional bylaw giving first and second reading and setting a date for the court of revision. With that, we can adjourn this public meeting. Second verse, very similar to the first. Thank you, Mr. Dietrich. Okay. Um, so Have a good evening. Now, now we turn to a public meeting for the consideration of the report to the Galbraith Drain. Uh, this again, a public meeting uh, we uh, again are not aware of any landowners who've expressed an intent to participate in tonight's council meeting uh, to ask questions, uh, but uh, certainly there may be some watching via YouTube and we welcome you to this meeting. Uh, tonight, uh, looking at the Galbraith drain, uh, we have invited Brandon Widner with Spreet Associates Engineering and Architects to present the report for this drain. Welcome Mr. Widner.
Brendan, you with us? He was with us. Did we lose our expert? Okay, Brandon, we're having difficulty hearing you. We'd, we'd invite you to take the floor, but we need to do. Okay, so, so Mr. Widner is uh, experiencing, from what we can tell, some broadband issues, um, but perhaps we can call on our drainage superintendent, uh, Scott Richardson, to assist with uh, this matter. Uh, Scott, did you want to uh, speak? Scott, are you with us? Well, Brandon is back, okay. Brandon, can you hear my voice? I'm experiencing some difficulty, you hear myself. Okay, so we're having uh, the, the drain experts experiencing uh, internet plumbing problems, that's interesting. Um, to take this. Scott? Okay, Council, forgive our uh, our circumstances here. Uh, another clarion call for the importance of broadband in our community. Um, Clerk Perfeltz, do you have advice about how we proceed here? Do we just wait a little bit? Okay, so... So council, we're contemplating moving to the next train and then coming back to this one and giving our guests the opportunity to, uh, to uh, try to recover. Um, if our guests can hear us, certainly uh, there's an opportunity to use the dial-in phone number for uh, this conference call to connect to our system, I believe. And uh, we would appreciate uh, the opportunity to hear from you in that fashion if the internet uh, method is not working. Uh, so uh, let's put the uh, the Galbraith drain matter on temporary hold, perhaps a little unusual, and uh, we'll turn our attention uh, to the Holsworth drain report. Again, this is a, a public meeting to receive a drainage report. Uh, again, I'm not aware of any landowners who have expressed intent to participate this evening, uh, but for those who may be watching via YouTube with interest, we welcome you to this discussion. Um, and tonight we're, we have uh, Ben Gowing from GM Blue Plan Engineering to present the report on the Holsworth Municipal Drain. Um, Mr. Gowing, welcome. I'm hoping that you have good internet. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, can everyone hear me? Sounds good. I'm encouraged. Oh, perfect. Uh, so good evening, members of council. Uh, my name is Ben Gowing. Uh, I'm the signing engineer for the Holsworth Municipal Drain. Uh, representing GM Blue Plan Engineering Limited. Um, so again, a little bit of background. GM Blue Plan was appointed in December of 2019 by the Municipality of North Perth to investigate uh, improvements to an existing private drainage system uh, that outlets into the Spears Municipal Drain, uh, and this new system would become the Holsworth Municipal Drain. Uh, the proposed drain is located approximately at the intersection of North Perth Road 152 and Perth County Line 91. Uh, so the, the petition for drainage works was originally submitted under Section 4 of the Drainage Act and signed by William Holsworth, representing Lot 13, Concession 10, Wallace, to enclose a portion of a private open ditch uh, on his property. Uh, additionally, since that time, Dan Schill, representing lots 9 and 10 of Concession 11, as well as Chuck Blancher, uh, representing the County of Perth, have joined the petition uh, as GM Blue Plan's investigative works progressed. Um, the signing landowners represent only 39.7% of the watershed area, uh, but as the petition has been signed by the County of Perth, um, for drainage of line 91 per section 41c of the drainage act uh, we have deemed the petition to be valid um, so 
the in total there are 12 properties that have been determined uh, within the watershed for the proposed drainage works uh, totaling 82.6 hectares approximately 205 acres um, the drainage works are proposed uh, the drainage works proposed are intended to replace as i mentioned an existing private open ditch uh, currently outletting to the spears drain uh, as well as two existing award drains to the northeast of the intersection of 91 and 152, still within the Spears watershed. Uh, the original construction date of these two award drains is not precisely known, uh, although our review of the existing drainage reports that were available to us indicate that uh, the, Spe well, the Spears drain and uh, previously the Wallace drain four um, these award drains were in existence prior to 1927. Um, an on-site meeting was held uh, in January of 2020 at the North Perth Municipal Offices. Um, the watershed, based on GM Poor Plan's review of previous drainage reports, was reviewed with all of the landowners present, uh, and drainage concerns within the watershed area were discussed. Um, at this meeting, the County of Perth indicated their desire to address uh, the crossing of line 91 uh, and the, in the inclusion of a branch to extend to part lot 14 concession 10 was proposed at this meeting and discussed with the landowners um, it was also indicated to us that uh, evaluating the capacity of the downstream the outlet and a existing railway culvert would be beneficial um, subsequently a design meeting was held on june 14 2020 at uh, Bill Holsworth's farm to discuss the updated scope of work and corresponding costs. Um, at this meeting, uh, additional landowners present uh, expressed their desire to explore additional options uh, for replacing and extending the award drains north of 91 uh, as their capacity was assumed to be insufficient for current drainage needs. Uh, so in response to the landowner feedback, um, GM Blue Plan evaluated multiple design options, held a second design review meeting on March 24th, 2021 uh, at the Wallace Community Center. Um, all of our drainage options uh, that were previously requested by the landowners were presented along with corresponding, corresponding cost estimates. Uh, and it was all ultimately decided by the landowners present that the replacement of the private ditch and both uh, upstream award drains would be completed as well as the addition of a branch to part lot 14, uh, the Horn property. Uh, so the final proposed project involves the installation of 1,568 meters of concrete field tile, size 250 to 675 millimeter in diameter to take uh, 38 millimeters of rainfall in a 24 hour period. Uh, as I mentioned before, the proposed tile system will replace the existing award drains and allow for the closure of a private open ditch uh, on the William Holsworth property. Uh, two new road crossings will be installed under North Perth, or sorry, Perth County Line 91, as well as a crossing under North Perth Road 152, and a branch extending from uh, line 91 to the property line of the Horn property, part lot 14, concession 10, will be constructed. Uh, included in the works at the outlet, a portion of the Spears drain is to be cleaned out and deepened slightly, as well as the lowering of the existing culvert under the existing railway. Uh, allowances have been provided for both crop damage and right of way uh, to applicable land landowners along the course of the proposed drainage works and are included in the assessment schedule. Uh, the total cost for this project, including allowances, is estimated to be $341,440. Uh, the, the construction assessment has been broken down into both a main drain as well as the Horn branch, um, with the cost for the drainage works being assessed out over the watershed on an outlet basis to the landowners within the watershed corresponding to the, uh, the land areas that they have draining into the system. Um, Direct benefit costs uh, for the drain enclosure are assessed to William Holsworth, uh, and increased costs for the installation of the road crossings have been assessed to Perth County and North Perth, respectively. Um, as the proposed drainage system is considered a new drain, we're anticipating that, that uh, the project will be at least partially grant eligible, although none of that uh, can be guaranteed at this time. Um, and so, 
following that up uh, along with the construction cost estimate we've provided a maintenance schedule uh, for the allocation of any future maintenance costs occurring within the closed portion of the drain um, as of now we're expecting project tendering uh, potentially in the summer of 2021 um, and possible construction commencing as early as this fall or the spring of 2022 uh, and as always uh, the project is sub still subject to uh, appeals in both the Court of Division and Drainage Tribunal uh, as applicable. And that's all I have. If, uh, if anyone has any questions on our proposed works, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Thank you, Mr. Gow. Um, again, we, we're not aware of uh, any uh, residents, assist landowners uh, on the call with us, but Council, there is an opportunity for you at this time to ask any questions that you would about this matter. Has the Burnett drain been done, done or not? Uh, the uh, Burnett drain has been taken care of, yes. Thank you. I, do. Well, I never got the right number, so I could never get into the meeting. Oh. Okay. Just... So, so why don't we finish this matter and then we'll be happy to consider your comments at that point. We're talking about the Holsworth drain right now, sir. So we'll, we'll come back to you in a moment. Um, council, any questions about the Holsworth drain or this report? Okay, we're not seeing any. So um, at this point, I, I guess we're not uh, registering any significant concerns as a result of this public meeting. And uh, that means that um, following this public meeting, we will consider a provisional bylaw giving first and second reading, and we will also consider setting the date for the court of revision. And given that then, for the Holsworth drain matter, uh, we can call this public meeting adjourned. Now, uh, I think as a courtesy, as a courtesy to our, our um, caller, um, if you could identify yourself, uh, it's, it's a little, uh, unusual, but you can appreciate that technology creates some uh, challenges for us. So uh, we're glad you were able to come in. Um, did you hear the report on the Burnett drain, sir? Yes, I was at the last meeting, yes. Okay, uh, could you identify yourself? I, I assume you wish to ask questions uh, at this point. If so, could you identify yourself? Lloyd Brubaker. Okay, and... and do you have questions about this report, Mr. Brubaker? Well, I was kind of wondering what's, what's going to happen. I, mean, uh, I wasn't sure yet what, what's all going to happen, so I, they told me to phone in, and uh, Patricia gave me this one number, and I was on there for 15 minutes and never never got connected to the meeting. Then I phoned in to the other, another number on the paper, and they gave me another number, but that one uh, couldn't connect either, so, so all of a sudden somebody connected me to your meeting, that's all I know. Okay, well, the, the, the marvels of modern technology sometimes uh, get astray, unfortunately. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I, I think, I mean, we've we've taken the report from Mr. Dietrich. I don't know if Mr. Dietrich is, is remaining on the call or whether he's left. Okay, well, what I was wondering, what, what was the outcome of the meeting? Okay, so the, the clerk has suggested a course of action, Mr. Brubaker, that, that probably would be useful. Um, we're going to ask um, the uh, Mr. Dietrich from Dietrich Engineering, uh, who prepared the report, to give you a call by telephone tomorrow, if that's all right. And that will give you the opportunity to ask your questions and uh, express anything uh, that you'd like to at that time. Is, is that okay with you, sir? Yeah, that's fine. I just, okay. uh, if you don't call in, you, if your voice isn't heard, then uh, they think everything's fine, so. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, for attempting to call in, and uh, we're glad you finally did make it in. And we'll get uh, Mr. Dietrich to call you tomorrow. Um, the clerk will take care of uh, notifying him of that request. So thanks for coming. Um, we're going to move on to another drain. Sorry about that, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next up then, uh, I believe we have, um, we're gonna return council to the Galbraith drain. I believe we have Brandon uh, Widner with us. 
from Spreet and uh, Brandon, uh, welcome. I know it was a bit arduous, uh, but you have the floor at this point. We're looking forward to your report. Brandon, can you hear us? It looks like the whole system has frozen. Okay, no, I'm seeing heads moving now, that's good. Brandon, are you with us? Okay, uh, Scott, I see a placeholder for Scott in the WebEx interface. Scott, are you with us? I can hear you, can you hear me okay there? Yes, we can hear you fine. Yeah. We, we don't okay. have in, in attendance or at least he's not registering the ability to hear us. So I'm wondering if there's something that you can do with regards to this report. Uh, yeah, I could. I can walk you through the report um, if that's okay. Um, Please. Okay, uh, Spriets are pleased to present their report to council for the reconstruction of the uh, Gallabreath drain on part lots seven to 12, concessions four and five in the Elm Ward. <clears throat> the total watershed area is approximately 241 hectares. The report was prepared under section 78 of the Drainage Act and received uh, respect from motion of council. The work is initiated by a request signed by one of the affected landowners. Uh, brief history, the, the uh, Gallabreath drain was last reconstructed under a report by E.W. Shiflett of Gans via Manorill in August the 5th, 1975. And it consisted of the installation of approximately 2,558 lineal meters of 250 to 525 millimeter diameter field tile. Prior to that, the drain was originally constructed under S.W. Archibald, dated 19, January 24th, 1939. This drain consisted of an open drain underneath a 250 mil to 350 mil diameter tile that, that's laid and extends from the Johnson drain at lot eight, concession five, to road 166 for approximately a length of 1,200 meters. The site meeting was held with respect to the project, and there's been later discussions of the landowners reported the following. The owner uh, of J&T Clark uh, indicated that the existing drain functioned fine. Um, they had no problems there. Um, um, the owner, R.J. Haverkamp, uh, requested that the existing ditch of their lands be abandoned, backfilled. Upon further discussions, the drain be improved for better service of their lands. Um, owner uh, R&J Galbreath indicated that drain was still functioning on their lands, and they also indicated the ditch in their farm was privately backfilled. Owners, uh, the Bymans um, and Algon Hamilton, indicated that their property is served by an, by an existing private tile, and there was uh, not, a, we're not requesting any improvements at the time. Um, and J and B Craftsman indicated that they are going to, uh, they use subsurface, they're gonna subsurface drain their farm for the future, so they would like to have their outlet fixed up. Um, the proposed drain is designed with respect to capacity using the drainage coefficient under the guidelines today, an inch and a half or uh, of drainage coefficient per 24 hour period. Um, the recommendations for the Gallabut drain and the branches A and C to be twinned in areas with a new 600 to 750 diameter concrete tile and replaced in the remaining area with 300 to 600 concrete tile, including related appurtenances, related appurtenances. That the remaining portions of the overflow swell constructed in 39 be backfilled, graded to construct a waterway to accommodate excess surface water. Um, the maintenance work will be clean, completed by the municipality on the Johnson drain to provide a, a proper outlet for the new drain. Um, and that's that's pretty well. That that looks like that's all Brandon would have to present there, Council. Can can people hear me now? Oh, there's Brandon. Yeah. Yes, yes, we can. Welcome. Sorry. 
So sorry about uh, technical problems, but uh, I'll be honest, where I live, my cell service is worse than my internet, so I have to go outside. Um, but I believe Scott summarized uh, much of the report. Um, you know, we were appointed on this, uh, I believe, last April. We have issued the report. I noticed in the, we made a slight error in the date on the report. It should say May 20th, 2021. I apologize for that. Um, as Scott indicated, this report was uh, initiated by Ralph Haverkamp. He owns a number of properties on this drain. Um, and it was for the enclosure of a surface swale, which was created um, in 1939. And then it was, uh, let's say, improved in 1975 by a report by Gantney and Monroe. So this report is incorporating some of those work. Um, that were completed in 1975. We will be twinning the existing 21-inch tile that runs through the bottom three farms. Um, but this report is basically a replacement of the remainder of those works to a modern design. Uh, we did have a landowner meeting in October, um, which was also the on-site due to the pandemic, um, where much of this was presented, and there hasn't been any significant changes since then. Um, the total project cost is approximately 322000 and that's spread among the landowners present. And as Scott indicated, this will bring the drain up to an inch and a half design. Um, there is a number of special assessments, mainly to um, the road 166 with the three road crossings, and that's the only road which is affected by this work. Um, this project is fully grantable as well, even though there is some backfilling, it's because it was an overflow swale and not an actual ditch. Um, but if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, we're glad that uh, the technology did allow you to uh, weigh in on this. Um, at this time, Council, do you have any questions pertaining to this matter? Councillor Duncan? Yes, uh, Brandon, I just got, I was in some discussions with one of the land, the assessed landowners, and uh, I just wondered if you can help us understand uh, the, the Clark assessment is fairly high. Um, he tells me his water is going to flow to the to the open portion of the Johnson drain. So I'm just wondering uh, why his assessment would be so high for a short portion of drain. Well, if everyone turns to page page 11 now you know typically we get into assessments at the quarter revision but as you can see on page 11 there is a the assessments are broken down and mr clark is assessed on the main drain and he's only assessed on the main drain he's not assessed in any of the branches um, if you look at his assessment there is two components of it there's a benefit and there's an outlet so the outlet is the portion of water which gets to the drain and as you can see his assessment is approximately seventeen hundred dollars um, much of his assessment is generated by benefit, which we have assessed at about 38500 and that's for better control of subsurface and surface water. Um, and he does get a 30-inch tile across his property um, up to Haverkamp fence line. There's also an overflow swale that's being backfilled on his property, um, and there's a cost to that, so there's benefit for improvement of land there. Um, the cost of work on Mr. Clark's property are in excess of eighty thousand um, dollars. If you look, he's assessed approximately forty thousand two hundred. There is also allowances associated with that, and he is grantable, so his out-of-pocket costs are approximately twenty-two thousand, um, which are very similar to other people on the drain. Um, but I'm happy to go through his assessment more in detail at the quarter revision. Um, if anyone has any questions. Anything supplemental, Councillor Duncan, what do you think? No, no, that's good. I guess we'll, uh, we can worry about this more at the quarter revision. I guess if Mr. Clark would like to discuss it more then. Great, thank you. Anyone else on council have questions? Okay, um, so at this point, uh, we haven't had significant concerns raised during this meeting. Um, and uh, that means that uh, following this meeting, we will consider a provisional bylaw that gives first and second reading uh, to this matter. And uh, we will also set a date for the quarter revision. With that, we can call this public meeting 
Uh, thank you, um, all of our engineers who are with us tonight. Uh, at this time, we're going to bring council back into regular session with council's consent. I have a resolution to that end that reads as follows. The public meetings are now adjourned at 7.48 p.m. and the council reconvene into regular open council. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for this? I so move, yes. Thank you. And Councillor Seiler, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Will you? <laughs> Any discussion or debate on that resolution? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor, my vote didn't pop up. Thank you, Councillor Anstett, with your vote, that's uh, carried. And uh, now, Council, we can turn to some of the matters uh, incumbent from uh, these three public meetings. The first is item 4.1, which relates to the Burnett Municipal Dream. Uh, we have three items here. I again acknowledge Councillor Johnston's uh, intention to abstain. Um, uh, the matters here, let me read these resolutions in sequence. First, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth uh, will accept the Burnett Municipal Drain 2021 report prepared by Dietrich Engineering Limited. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Anstett, will you serve as seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate about this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And we're missing someone. Mayor Kaysenberg, I'm having trouble with my voting system now. It's Mrs. Andreessen, I'm in favor. So with that vote, that's carried. Thank you. And uh, next, then we have, um, and the hint here, in case anyone doesn't know, is hit home on the eScribe toolbar and then reload the meeting. That often solves the problem. Um, the next one is about the quarter revision, uh, a, a resolution as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will hold the quarter revision for the Burnett Municipal Drain on July 5th. 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Behrens to be our mover for this one? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you serve as the seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thanks. Any discussion or debate on that one? Those of you on the uh, Board of Revision might uh, take note of that. Right? All right, let's have that vote. So that is carried, thank you. And next, uh, the last one for the Burnett is the bylaw. And uh, the resolution reads as follows, that bylaw 62-2021 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works, Burnett Municipal Drain be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and, whoa, uh, a first and second time, I'm getting ahead of myself, and be provisionally adopted. And that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for this one? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our seconder? I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one? First and second reading. Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Next, then we turn to uh, the second drain in our sequence. Um, this one is this, the uh, Galbraith drain. And again, three items here, Council. The first, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will accept the Galbraith Municipal Drain Report prepared by Spreet Associates Engineering and Architects. Can I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover for this one? Finally, I get to move something. Yes, I would move that. 
<laughs> Sorry, Dave. And can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our seconder for this one? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate on that one? All right, let's have that vote. That is carried, thank you. Uh, next up is the quarter revision and the clerk has asked that we modify um, the timing to make sure that we have ample time for these uh, courts or revision date. So um, this resolution now reads that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will hold the court of revision for the Galbraith Municipal Drain on July 5th, 2021 at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Uh, can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as a seconder on this one? Yes, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate on that one? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. And the last one on this drain uh, is the bylaw. The bylaw 63-2021 being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works Calberth municipal drain be introduced, read, and considered read a first and second time and be provisionally adopted and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Enstead to be a mover for this one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Behrens, will you do the seconding duties? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate on that one? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. And now we turn our attention to the Holsworth Municipal Drain, item 4.3. Three resolutions again. Here's the first. The Council of the Municipality of North Perth will accept the Holsworth Municipal Drain report prepared by GM in plan engineering. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for this? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Uh, the clerk has asked for a 615 timeline on the next one. So uh, here's our resolution for that one, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth will hold the Court of Revision for the Holsworth Municipal Drain on July 5th, 2021 at 6.15 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover for this one? Yes, I will move that and I will say, Pat, that is great timing and I will be declaring a conflict on the Burnett, which will be the third quarter revision that night, so it will work out great. Good. And uh, Councillor Richardson, will you serve as the seconder on this one? I will second that motion. Thank you. Great. Any discussion or debate on this one? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. And now the bylaw. Hang on, Council. I'm looking for that. Okay, I have more one from the previous. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. 63. This one's 63. 64. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we have a bylaw resolution scrambling for it in the book here, but uh, it reads as follows of bylaw 64-2021, being a bylaw to provide for a drainage works, the Holsworth Municipal Drain, be introduced, read, and considered read a first and second time and be provisionally adopted, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for that one. 
I'll move the uh, move that. Yes. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Seiler will be our secondary. I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. Also, thank you for all the drain fun that we've had so far tonight. And uh, now I believe we're going to move forward with some other business, less draining. Right. Um, so uh, that brings us to item five. Uh, uh, and, and again, to the engineers with us, thank you very much for your service. Uh, to, for item five, reports from departments and key staff. Uh, we have no reports from the CAO's department for tonight's meeting, uh, but uh, grateful as always for their service to our community. Uh, next up then is item 5.2, reports from the clerk's department. For item 5.2.1, I am pleased to welcome back County of Perth Manager of Planning, Sally McMullen, who will be addressing matters sparked by this council's request of her department related to OPA 189, relating to changes proposed to the current County of Perth official plan related to surplus farm dwellings and their severance from farms in Perth County. Ms. McMullen, as always, welcome back to our council meeting. You have the floor. Thank you and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg and members of council. Um, I do have a one slide um, summary for you if um, I'm permitted to share, but again, it's one slide, so um, no worries if not. Um, but I wanted to start tonight with a clarification. So one of the so, things that you would, yes? Sorry, uh, Sally, Kirk Barefels is gonna work on that for you. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, one of the things that you had asked me for more detail on was to look at policy in the other, in other jurisdictions, similar municipalities to, um, or regions to Perth. And I have included Oxford County uh, in that data, but I. I do want to make the clarification specific to Oxford because I don't want um, to mislead council. Oxford County does not permit surplus farm dwellings uh, lot creation except in very specific and somewhat rare circumstances. So the information that I've presented in the report and in the attached chart, um, they relate to policy around um, accessory uses on existing small or non-farm rural lots um, that are not specifically created through surplus dwelling policies, but do exist within that region. So um, it's, not, it's not the way the lots were created, but there are similar lots in, in Oxford. So that's why they've been included, um, but I wanted to make that clarification because it is slightly different than the other jurisdictions that we're gonna look at or have looked at in the report. Um, the feedback that I received from this council um, and from the ministry staff uh, were, um, were, were constructive and helpful. And the work of responding to that feedback, I think, has provided um, an environment to create uh, an amendment to the amendment, if you will, um, a revision that, I, um, that I'm proposing tonight for you to consider. And I think um, the proposed amendment is better for the, for the feedback and additional consideration. In addition to the report that you have, I'm just going to offer three main points. Um, the first one being um, that the original draft of the amendment was based on the text in the official plan today and the editing of that text. And the method, that methodology appeared to um, dilute the overarching objective that the lots created um, are uh, representative of the minimum size needed to support the residential use. And so uh, what I've done instead as a reflection of the feedback was to draft a new policy. So um, instead of editing the existing language to just start fresh and be clear. So the proposal then would be to remove the existing policy and replace it with the new proposed policy. The second uh, item that I wanted to highlight was that um, with respect to accessory uses, the learnings from the other jurisdictions um, 
research was that some of our municipalities are allowing varied accessory uses, generally speaking, and they are not using prescriptive language in their official plan to limit those accessory uses on lots that are created through surplus farm policies. Um, instead, they are using the official plan to create a, a strong framework and, and the policy stops there. That then leads to the zoning bylaw, which is the implementing uh, policy for the OP. And it has been identified as the preferred tool from the up from other jurisdictions for um, being specific about accessory uses and the detailed regulation of uses, accessory uses that are permitted. The zoning bylaw in that way then allows lower tiers to exhibit their individuality and boundaries for their own enforcement programs. Those are the three main points that I wanted to bring forward from the report. Um, I think generally it's increasingly challenging to think about surplus farm dwelling policy in binary terms. Um, that might be the experience that some of you are having as well. It's, um, it's clear, especially upon looking at the other jurisdictions, that it isn't necessarily a heads or tails type of topic that there is rather a spectrum a variation um, from the, the specific language in the PPS. It's being expressed differently in different places. Um, and generally what's found is that the zoning bylaw is where specifics are found for the accessory uses. I think it's also um, been clear through our discussions and our debates, perhaps, if you will, that um, that the, that the previous report, that the feedback received, that additional work, um, and hopefully you'll find this um, new proposed, uh, or proposed amendment to the amendment, that, that our discussions and debates have stemmed really from a desire from all to do a good job of lot creation. And uh, I think that's the, the fundamental, um, the fundamental thing that I've been reflecting on looking at this spectrum of variation across different jurisdictions. So my goal in the report was to answer your questions and to show how I've used the feedback to propose a rewrite for this amendment. Um, it is in my professional opinion, a policy that follows the direction of the PPS that addresses the interests and needs expressed by councils, committees and landowners while giving flexibility to the lower tiers to be more prescriptive if they choose to do so in their zoning bylaws. The recommendations at the beginning of this report um, around additional information being provided to your council is that um, you receive it for information and that you provide um, feedback that you now have, um, either in the format of letter or resolution perhaps, but that it would be received at the county and um, by myself in order that we might um, continue to evaluate the amendment itself at the county of Perth Council meeting. So thank you for the additional time tonight and I'm available for questions, certainly. Thank you, Ms. McMullen. Um, appreciate that uh, there um, was a quite a bit of uh, effort to secure some of that information that was asked for by this council. And um, and I guess kind of relieved that uh, you've indicated it's helped with uh, refining uh, the amendment so that it can be um, you know, broadly useful and appropriate uh, in the context of the PPS and uh, other, other considerations. So um, uh, questions, uh, first comments for uh, Ms. McBellum from Council. So we're not seeing any. Oh, there we go. Um, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Mayor Todd. And uh, through uh, you, thank you, Sally, for uh, the report. I think uh, you've done a good job of uh, uh, addressing uh, some of the issues that uh, our council had uh, requested you to do so. Uh, there's a lot of information there. And uh, one of the issues or concerns uh, that uh, I believe uh, certainly came across in the uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs letter and your uh, meetings with uh, OMAFRA and 
uh, MMAH uh, were specifically regarding the issue of size, which is the issue uh, that we had talked about uh, at some length last December. And I still do have a concern here just in terms of uh, uh, a bit of an open context uh, here when we are talking about the issue of livestock uh, in terms of uh, the ability or enforcement abilities, uh, which, as you say, if the local municipalities choose to do so with respect to zoning. And I'm sure you're aware of the issue uh, that uh, some municipalities in Huron County have come across, uh, and there was a... Uh, the Planning Department, the Huron County Planning Department, did have uh, reports uh, last year to its county council regarding uh, what's called the Agricultural Zone 4, AG4 zone, and specifically it's regarding uh, uh, the ability or inability to regulate number of livestock units. I know you're making a distinction here between commercial uh, raising of livestock and non-commercial, but I would just like to hear your comments with respect to that issue. Thank you. Okay, through you, um, Mayor Todd, to Council. The, the livestock question, um, I did talk with Ministry staff specifically about that oh. and the issues that were um, raised in Huron County and the difficulty that, or the, I guess not difficulty, but the conversation that that led to there and how they have um, resolved it for the moment, um, temporarily at least. But the, the conversation that we had was about specifically the distinction of um, livestock operation versus an accessory use to a resident, accessory to a residential use. And we did find consensus in our conversation at least that there is a difference and that the Nutrient Management Act regulates livestock operations and that a uh, zoning bylaw um, would not be able to supersede that, but the Nutrient Management Act would supersede it in terms of limiting the number of livestock um, that an operation might have. So the keeping of animals as an accessory use for um, enjoyment or um, hobby uh, is is a different circumstance. And we, we did agree that that it doesn't offend the, the PBS or the Nutrient Management Act. Um, certainly that would have, I mean, it could be tested, um, but I don't believe that that, that that hobby nature of it or accessory to residential uses is something that would, um, would necessarily seek the province's um, attention from a enforcement perspective. That's my sense from our conversation. Um, and certainly um, in Huron, they have decided to carry on as is. Um, and the, the provincial staff that I spoke to um, did not indicate that there was any action transpiring around that at the moment in Huron. Thank you. Uh, my supplementary uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Sally, and again, thanks for that uh, comment, uh, is uh, regarding the issue of uh, home industries, uh, as you call them, or secondary farm occupations as they currently are entitled under the official plan. Uh, the expectation here is that if we do allow for secondary farm occupations uh, or home industries on a uh, surplus farm resident severance, the likelihood is that the amount of land involved in that uh, severance will be larger than what's currently a minimum required to service the lot. Can I have your comments on that, please? When we look at um, when we look at a surplus dwelling lot, we look at the clustering of buildings. Uh, we look at um, possible landscape features like windbreaks and such that would be um, considered accessory to the residential use or providing a service or use um, from a residential perspective. And so what you're, what I think I'm hearing in your question is that if someone was to propose um, a new 
um, home industry, we'll use that term for now, um, that they would somehow be able to increase the size of the lot because of that potential accessory use. But I would, if it wasn't currently there and it wasn't currently within the cluster and it was somehow contributing to a greater use, a greater area rather, and it wasn't um, accessory, then I would certainly be questioning whether or not it was truly a home industry and whether or not it should be included in the lot. If it didn't exist already, then someone's proposing to put one there either at the time of severance or later. And later, certainly the minimum lot size has already been determined. But if it's at the time of severance, then I would, um, I would request that the applicant actually bring forward a lot layout um, showing the concept of their proposed home industry, um, that it, it exists within the confines of the cluster the, and um, is, is that they have shown that either they are not contributing to a larger size or that they have some justification for it. Um, but in and of themselves, if they're in an accessory building and they are accessory in nature, then I guess I fail to see how they're contributing to uh, a larger size of the property. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, to follow on, on Councillor Rothwell's um, line of questioning, I just want to be sure I understand. Do you feel that the language that you're providing in this revision to the OPA uh, line um, is sufficiently tight to allow your team to make that distinction, to say, wait a minute now, you're asking for more for the sake of your accessory uh, use, and um, that's not our intent. The, the policy as uh, drafted the proposal for this policy is that when you look at a surplus dwelling severance, um, that everything inside the line that's proposed must be either residential, a service supporting that house, or accessory. Now, in combination with a reduction in the prescriptions around accessory uses, then, then an accessory structure that's existing or that's proposed um, in itself would be considered part of the use and not, not therefore contributing to something that's not a minimum size. So is everything inside the line residential, service, or accessory? And if we permit, if a zoning bylaw, for instance, permits someone to make a living in an accessory structure, um, in addition to the opportunity to make a living inside the dwelling or instead of, then that's a legitimate accessory use. So it's not contributing to the a greater size. It is part of the use that we're permitting through the consent. Okay, just, just wanted to be sure that you were confident that the language covered the scenario that um, Mr. Rothwell put on the table because I can see how that would be um, a concern if, if you didn't have the teeth to uh, act on that. Any other questions from council? Okay, uh, council, we have a resolution here. Um, the resolution, I'll point out, uh, invites us to provide further comment so the implication is that with this recommendation, uh, this resolution, that we will have another opportunity as a council to formulate some response to this and uh, send it along to the county and the manager of planning. Um, if uh, you feel differently, then uh, um, obvious, all right? So um, I have a resolution for our consideration, if you're prepared for that, uh, that the uh, Municipality of North Perth Council receive uh, the report entitled Additional Information Reproposed Official Plan Amendment to Revise Surplus Farm Dwelling Policies for Information, and that the Municipality of North Perth Council provide comment 
recommendations and any unresolved, un unresolved concerns on the amendment to Perth County Council and the manager of planning for Perth County. Can I call on Councillor Andreessen to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Anstett, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I would second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Anything further on this one? We're not seeing anything, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Ms. McMullen. Thank you. Uh, next up then is item 5.2.2. In this, council is asked to exempt a property in Listowel from part lot control in order to facilitate the construction of townhomes and the ability of the developer, uh, Mr. Wegler, to convey homes on individual lots. I think we have Mr. Yilmaz with us. Uh, Mr. Yilmaz from the county's planning department is here. He is the lead planner from North Perth and uh, we'll ask him to offer a few comments on this matter. Welcome, Mr. Yilmaz. Thank you, uh, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of Council. So yeah, just the one report from me tonight, and it's to discuss an application for the exemption of part lot control. The applicant is seeking approval from North Perth Council to pass a bylaw, which will effectively exempt the subject lands from the part lot control provisions uh, of the Ontario Planning Act. If exempted, the applicant will be permitted to establish se several townhouse dwellings on conveyable lots of record. The applicant has submitted two separate applications re regarding two blocks of registered plan 44M72. Block 69 contains a seven unit townhome and block 70 contains a five unit townhome. Um, and these, these are currently under construction. Um, each lot will have one dwelling unit of a townhouse dwelling. And each lot has appropriate public road frontage along Hollinger Avenue, and each has individual service connections to municipal servicing. Uh, additionally, appropriate access easements are provided for each set of townhouses. The subject lands are within the residential five, R5-14 zone uh, of the North Perth zoning bylaw. This zone permits multi-unit residential uses, including townhouse dwellings. Um, all of the dwellings are and proposed parcels meet the provisions and regulations of the North Perth zoning bylaw. Block 69 was subject of a minor variance application with relief granted reducing the minimum exterior side yard setback from six meters to 4.5 meters and the minimum interior side yard setback from three meters to 1.52 meters. The removal of part lot control to establish lot lines between units of townhouse dwellings is an accepted method of lot creation under the Planning Act. As such, it is staff's recommendation that Council approve the applications by Joseph Wagler Homes Incorporated for the exemption of part lot control on lands described as Block 69 and 70 of Plan 44M72. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Yilmaz. Uh, Council, any uh, questions or first comments on this matter? Okay, we have uh, two items here with this then for our consideration. Uh, first uh, resolution that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the applications by Joseph Wagler Homes Inc. for the exemption of park lot control on lands described as block 69 and 70 of Plan 44M72, Bollinger Avenue in the Listowel Ward, Municipality of North Perth. If the proposed bylaw is adopted, it shall be forwarded to the County of Perth for approval. Sir Barons, can I call on you to move this one? Yes, I will move that motion, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Duncan, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Not seeing the results screen.
Okay. Um, and Deputy Clerk Beer, can you hear us at this moment? We're, we're not seeing the results screen. I'll have voted in favor um, except for uh, Councillor Anstett's vote. Yeah, my vote, my vote never did pop up. I'm in favor. Thank you. Okay. So yes, that Pastor is Anstett. all in favor then. All right. Thank you. Then that is carried. Um, are we having an eScribe uh, technology glitch there? Okay. Uh, now I'm seeing it on the screen. Thank you. And uh, although different speaker than we usually see. And, uh, and next then is the bylaw. Bylaw number 66-2021 being a bylaw to exempt from part lot control be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum, can I call on you for the honors of moving this one? Yes, I will make that motion. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Johnston, will you be our second? Yes, I would second that. You finally got to second something tonight. <laughs> All right, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Yes, so we're gonna wait till we get the re results report from Deputy Clerk Beer, then we might reboot this screen council. Um, we're not sure what's going on here, but we've lost the display that we usually see for voting. Deputy Clerk Beard, do we have a result yet? Yes, all have voted in favor of the motion. Thank you. So that is carried. And uh, now I think we'll just pause for a moment, stretch, and uh, see whether we've got this back up. All right, we're keeping our fingers crossed that that did the job. Uh, next up then, in item 5.2.3, council is invited to approve an exemption, the North Perth signage bylaw in favor of Skyline Properties to support on-site market direction giving. I will ask uh, Ed Podnowitz, our chief building official for his orientation to this particular matter. Welcome, Mr. Podnowitz. Oh, good evening, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg and members of council. Um, with you tonight here to pre prepare to report in regards to a request from property owners, developers for Skyline Living Tuomly Manor Apartments. They're located at 1000 Tuomly Street West in uh, the municipality of North Perth. They're currently uh, under construction. They have two 59 unit four story apartment buildings and uh, they wish to place a series of uh, banner type signs on the property to um, promote um, rentals of the units that they're constructing. Um, I've included in my report section 17.2 of the uh, municipality sign bylaw, and it specifically says uh, the signs indicating that the property on which they are located is for sale or for rent, provided that such signs are no larger than 0 0.80 square meters, 8.6 square feet, and provided that only one such sign shall be permitted per lot. So the owner developers, they are requesting um, a series of signs here. They're, uh, they're requesting two 96 square foot signs, two 200 square foot signs, and one 40 square foot sign at various locations on the property, and as shown on the uh, detailed plan that they had submitted and I provided in your package. And they are also requesting these signs to remain in place for a period of up to one year. Um, so our uh, sign bylaw does under section 2.30. Uh, allow for exemptions to this bylaw uh, upon resolution of council. And uh, therefore I've uh, brought this report to council and I've uh, made a recommendation uh, that staff would be in favor of approving this, uh, um, this request. I take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Mr. Pudnowitz. Questions or first comments from council on this matter? Thanks, Mayor Todd. Through you, uh, thanks, uh, Ed, for your report. My question is, uh, I mean, this is a significant change in terms of our uh,
bylaws requirements or signed bylaw requirements. Is this something that uh, perhaps uh, staff need to look at or review in terms of a uh, proposed modification to our regulation or if this, because of the size and scale of two 59 unit uh, apartment buildings is uh, something not contemplated by our bylaw? Thank you. Uh, through you, uh, Mayor Todd. Um, I don't know if we could look at other bylaws to see if they have something uh, similar to what you're requesting here or what we have before us in a request. Um, I guess what I could add to that is we probably don't, uh, we don't get this type of request very often as we don't have this type of construction taking place very often. Uh, so this is kind of a one-off or an unusual uh, request here, but I can see uh, you know, why they need uh, the size and scope of these signs to uh, promote some um, some rentals of the properties. It's a fairly large uh, uh, construction project that they've undertaken here. But we could look at our uh, other side bylaws and uh, and see if there's something that we could amend in our current bylaw. Thanks, Ed. I agree with your comment. It's probably uh, not something that was contemplated under our bylaw. And uh, although we may see something like it in the future, I suspect uh, we're not going to see something of this size for some time. Thank you. Mr. Seiler is next. Thank you, Mayor Todd, and uh, thank you, Ed, for your report. And I've had a lot of people ask about what's happening out across from Walmart, is what, how they approach you. And I think that with these signs, it'll answer a lot of questions. And if it's only for one year, I think that's a good thing. And this will help the people understand what's going to be available there on the property that they're building there. So I would pass this motion if you like, but I think it's a great idea. Thank you. If I may, uh, Mayor Todd, uh, just uh, just one further thing here. I did request the prop or the developer uh, to share any additional information um, on, um, I guess, more of their um, marketing for this uh, development here. Um, I, I offered them the opportunity to do that and I didn't receive anything from them, but just based on the signs and what I'm looking at on the pictures, it looks like this is geared more towards the senior crowd uh, for the rentals. Thanks, Mr. Podnowitz. I have a real simple question. That is, if these signs deteriorate, deteriorate, I'll find my word, and um, you know, they fade or they are damaged, um, how are we ensured that this, uh, that they will be kept up properly so that they are aesthetic? Uh, and through you, uh, Mary Todd, we, in our general requirements, in our sign bylaw, our, our current sign bylaw, we do have provisions for uh, enforcement of signs that are, um, I guess, deteriorating or in, in bad shape or if they're a safety issue or, or that, those types of things. Those are um, actually included in our current sign bylaw. So we do have some enforcement abilities. Okay, so with this resolution, then we're not uh, abrogating or, or sort of pushing aside the whole of the sign bylaw, all of the conditions apply. Correct. Thank you. Anyone else with questions or comments? All right, I have a resolution for our consideration as described, uh, reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the request from Skyline Living to permit the placement of two 96 square foot signs, two 200 square foot signs, and one 40 square foot sign at various locations on property located at 1000 Twomley Street West, North Perth. And that said signs are permitted to remain in place for up to a period of one year from date of this resolution being adopted. And I call on Councillor Richardson to be a mover. So moved. I'll move that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rothwell, will you be our second? I'll second the motion, yes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. It's Councillor Anstead. My vote didn't pop up again. I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Clerk Beer. We're still not getting the, the results screen from eScribe, so you'll have to advise us each time.
I'll vote it in favor of the motion. Thank you, so that is carried. Um, we, we've hit 8.30. I think uh, there's sufficient business that lies ahead of us based on the agenda that we should take a five minute break. And perhaps in this five minute break, we can restore the eScribe functionality. Um, so I'll encourage you to come back. Uh, well, let's be generous. A generous five minutes at 8.40. Um, and uh, this is our health break for the evening.
All right, counselors, we'll call you back to the table. All right, let's, uh, let's begin here. Uh, next up is item 5.2.4. In this matter, council is asked to consider the closing and stopping up of a road allowance proximal to Walton Avenue in Listowel. This is work that will support the creation of a stormwater management pond amongst other things. And I think I'm gonna call on CAO Snell for his comments on this one. Uh, that's what Clerk Berkfeld tells me to do. So uh, CAO Snell, you're up. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so tonight is um, dealing with um, Walton Avenue North and the land um, to acquire for the stormwater management pond. But first we have to um, stop up and close. Um, a part of a street or a portion of a street that is connected to Walton Avenue North, um, nobody really understands the historic nature of, of the piece that juts out and goes um, to the east. Um, but it really is of no value to the municipality. And um, um, uh, under our purchase of the agreement, part of it will be kept by the municipality for um, the stormwater management pond and part of it will be transferred to the owner of, of the existing lot for, for future development. Certainly I can take any questions council may have. Thanks, CAO Snell. Um, council, any questions or first comments on this matter? Okay, we're not uh, seeing anything showing up here. So I have a resolution for consideration that bylaw number 65-2021 being a bylaw that authorizes stopping up and closing of an unnamed road allowance described as unnamed street. Plan 290, part four and part six, RP 44R 5863, lying south of park lot five, North Perth, be introduced, read and considered read a first and second time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. And that the council of the municipality of North Perth will declare surplus for disposal. Property described as unnamed street plan 290 part six, RP 44R 5863, lying south of park lot five, North Perth. Councillor Seiler, can I call on you to be the mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. Councillor Andreessen, will you be our second? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And it looks like our East administration's worked. We got a break and that is carried. The clerk says we got a break. That's good news. All right, <clears throat> we uh, turn now to um, item 5.3, reports from the programs department for item 5.3.1. We are invited again to support the free distribution on a first come first served basis of picnic tables owned by the municipality to local businesses, requesting them to support outdoor dining. This is a measure related to COVID-19 pandemic recovery. I'll ask North Perth Manager of Programs, Amy Gangel, to provide us with more information about this request. Ms. Gangel. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Yes, it was almost a year ago that we received approval from council to waive our picnic table fee for the 2020 uh, summer season. So uh, this year, just anticipating some of our outdoor commercial uh, dining areas or dining areas requesting some outdoor dining areas, um, would like to have use of some of our picnic tables. Uh, so we uh, are recommending that uh, the picnic table fee be waived again for the 2021 season. Uh, we are um, working with our local businesses as well as our downtown cores to uh, make sure we're also adding additional ta picnic tables in other areas uh, for um, individuals uh, that are using some of our facilities. 
uh, we will hold some of our picnic tables for uh, additional for the uh, pavilions should we have an opportunity to be able to rent those out for outdoor avenues but we feel we would have sufficient picnic tables to cover uh, some of these requests that are coming in questions thanks Ms. Gangle any questions or first comments on this matter from council We're not seeing any, so we have a resolution uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth directs staff to make picnic tables from its inventory available to interested commercial parties without charge during the COVID-19 pandemic period in 2021 on a first come first serve basis. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover for that? Yes, I would, great idea, thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Behrens, will you be our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion, thank you. Thanks, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Um, Ms. Gangle, as always, we thank your uh, group for their work. Um, we know that this is a really busy time for you and uh, the uh, baselines keep jumping around. So uh, thank you for uh, your graciousness in all of this. Um, next up is item 5.4, a report from the manager of facilities and the facilities department. There is no report tonight, but I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of reports from this department in the not too distant future. So uh, I invite um, our manager there, Mr. Newell, to give council's appreciation to the team. Uh, let's turn next then to um, agenda item number 5.5. And uh, at this point, uh, the finance staff has brought forward for council a review of accounts as of this day, June 7th. I'll note that some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and will absent themselves from consideration of voting. Uh, from the other councillors, are there any questions about this report for our staff? Seeing none, we have a resolution that reads as follows. The following summary of accounts be received by council for information total at the bottom line is $1,019,901.91. That's a lot of ones and nines. Um, can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our seconder? I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on that one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And I think we've got everybody there. So that is carried, thank you. Uh, next up then is item 5.5.2. Council has brought a report outlining the scope and change in costing of insurance for the municipality's sundry purposes. I will call on North Perth Director of Finance and Treasurer Frances Hale to introduce her report and leave it to her discretion to call for expert guests who I believe are with us to to us tonight, Ms. Hale. Yes, uh, members of council. Um, this evening, uh, Josh White, our uh, finance and person assistant, uh, will be presenting his report. As well, we have um, Tim Keel from Keel Datsun with us, uh, our, our brokerage for uh, our insurance uh, this evening. And uh, if I might at this time, I'll just pass it over to Josh. Thanks, Brian. Uh, can everybody hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, good evening, uh, members of Council, Mayor Kaysenberg. On March 18th, with the assistance of Kiel Dadson, the Municipality of North Perth issued a request for proposal for our general insurance and risk management services, mainly in anticipation of a sizable premium increase that we were expecting given the current climate of the municipal insurance landscape. On May 14th, the RFP closed and the municipality received Proposals from Marsh Canada Limited, our current insurer and impact public entities, which you may know better as Frank Talent Company. Uh, the municipal staff 
conducted evaluations based on experience, financial stability, services offered, and pricing, ultimately scoring the offer offerings relatively closely, but the premium savings offered by the incumbent Marsh Daniel Limited resulted in them being scored higher. As Fran mentioned, Tim Keel from Keel Dadson is on with us tonight, um, and I will pass it over to him to give a more detailed overview of the policy submitted and their own respective findings. I'm not hearing your guest at this point. Tim, you're on the screen. Okay, having a little bit of technical difficulty, it seems. Patter, did not, are you able to unmute him just in case he's having issues? Yeah, we did. Um, there you go. Great. Right. Yeah. Thank you, folks. There we go. Sorry. My apologies. Okay. You can hear me now? Yep. We Great. certainly can. Thank you. I apologize for the the uh, technical, uh, or my technical abilities, I guess, would be the best way to term that. So good evening, Mayor, Councillors, and staff. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this evening in respect to the uh, insurance program for the uh, municipality of North Perth. Um, as Josh alluded, we had requested uh, proposals from um, a number of uh, carriers that uh, operate in the municipal insurance uh, field. And uh, at this point, we were able to Receive two proposals, one from Marsh Canada, which is the present provider, and Frank Cowan Company, which is now known as uh, Intact. Uh, we've broken the proposal review into four specific categories that were then scored based on what we felt would be their appropriate importance based on the criteria provided in their quest for proposals, which are uh, price, services, experience, and coverages. Uh, there was not a large difference between each proposal in respect to the service experience and coverages provided. Marsh scored best as their pricing is better. Uh, we also scored this without pricing so we would have an idea of how each program compared without taking the pricing factor into consideration. Uh, Cowan Intact scored one percentage point better than Marsh. Uh, in the other three categories without the pricing component. Each company has their own unique features and benefits to the proposals, but on an overall score, they scored much the same. Uh, we tried to capture some of the more important features of each proposal. Hopefully this offers a quick summary of some of the highlights of these programs. Intact, uh, their entity abuse included or is included the full policy limits with no aggregate. Um, Intact has no general aggregate, so which means if there are claims, it doesn't reduce the sum insured on uh, based on the amount that had already been claimed. They do full medical malpractice included and not limited to incidental malpractice, uh, full policy limits with no aggregate. They have no aggregate for products and completed operations. Their environmental impairment liability includes coverage for sold and closed land or landfills and underground storage tanks, if applicable. Uh, they provide a road review loss control service, which is unique to them. Uh, Marsh, some of their features are they have no annual auto adjustments. So if, uh, for example, you had 16 units on your fleet to start the policy term and you added four new vehicles over the course of the policy term, they would not uh, adjust that uh, for the additional until you started the following term. So they quoted an umbrella liability instead of excess liability. Their municipality liability policy covers abuse to the full policy limit uh, for the entity, but it also provides uh, coverage for the perpetrator with a limited coverage of 250,000 per claim. Their cyber coverage, uh, which I think is a, a, a main component of coverage today, um, appears to have a lot more and 
a lot more broader coverage extensions than what the Cowan Intact program did. We also want to point out a couple of coverage limitations we feel we should draw to your attention. Uh, one in particular is the COVID restrictions. Um, um, COVID and coverage for COVID uh, is typically not covered under property policies and it is not with either company. But with respect to liability coverage, Cowan Intact does not exclude claims that would be brought forth as a result of COVID. Uh, Marsh has introduced a million dollar sublimit and Marsh's coverage excludes the services not noted below. And, and of concern here would be child services or child care. The other ones would be medical facilities, hospitals, medical centers, um, future testing, treatment, vaccination, or other centers, homeless shelters, prisons, jails, any supply of PPE, medical equipment, ventilators, testing equipment um, would be excluded under that COVID coverage. So um, this has been a bit of a trend within, there, there are co companies out there that do not provide any COVID related coverage on property or liability. Um, whereas these two companies, one providing at a sublimit with some limitations and the other not having a COVID restriction at this point. Uh, the other issue was under the environmental coverage. Uh, Cowan will cover closed or sold landfill sites, which I, I think is a benefit and a feature. Marsh will cover these, but has a warranty in their policy stating that the active monitoring must be in place. Um, as you know, um, or you could probably see in your report, the premiums are up again this year. This again is due to the hard market we have been facing for the last couple of years. Uh, municipal accounts tend to see higher rates because they tend to have operations in the more difficult to place classes that we experience right now in this hard market. Some of those being snow removal, hospitality risks, uh, uh, sports facilities, etc. We did complete a review of the premiums paid by the town from 2014 policy term through to this year. Uh, it's interesting to note that the premium in 2016 uh, was about 212,000 and the coverage on the uh, property has increased from 85,000 or 85 million to about 128 million in the 21-22 proposal. And if you were to recalculate the 2006 pre premium based on those increased limits, uh, the premium would have been right around what you're facing today. So, and, and what I mean from that is that the premiums have uh, or were significantly uh, reduced in 2017 because we were in a competitive market. There was some, some new companies that come on uh, onto the market back at that time and the uh, municipality was able to take advantage of those, uh, of those reduced premiums uh, through the RFP process that we went through in 2017. So long story short, we were just we're kind of back to where we were uh, when those competitors were introduced into the market. Um, lastly, the summary based on our review, of the proposals outlined earlier would indicate that Marsh would be the logical option. There are some concerns with the uh, exclusions of COVID for the daycare. However, once you consider the increased activities in respect to the cyber exposure and the known claim activity in this type of coverage and compare that to the strict protocols and risk management initiatives around COVID and daycares already in place. Uh, couple that with the considerable increase in premium to have the COVID coverage at policy limits for liability, uh, it would be the most op economical option to proceed to renew with Marsh. We've asked Marsh to approach the liability insurer and ask to have the daycare removed from that uh, exclusion under the sublimit endorsement. And we're presently waiting to hear the results of, of that request. Uh, in an effort to reduce the impact of this premium increase, you could consider a higher deductible option, uh, an increase from your current deductible uh, to a $25,000 deductible on property and liability result in a savings of about $7,300, $7,362 annually, 5,500 of that on the property and 1,844 on the liability. 
you could increase your current deductible to a $50,000 deductible. Currently, the deductible is $10,000, and that would result in a $14,724 annual savings. Uh, I would not recommend the $50,000 deductible option uh, at this point uh, because the additional increase in the deductible cost is not offset with enough premium savings. You might consider it on the property policy. Uh, if you were to go three years without a claim, you can save the additional deductible cost back. Um, however, I don't feel there's enough uh, savings to increase the liability deductibles at this point because the savings is, is rather low on that. Uh, please note these uh, proposals are subject to change based on new claims, losses, and the final vehicle and driver equipment and building insured schedules. Uh, as we approach renewal date of July 1st. The quotes received were based on the information provided in the RP. Uh, we've completed a review of the coverages and extensions listed in their proposals, but we did not complete a review of the actual wordings, which would be a fairly large and expensive undertaking. Um, thank you again for the opportunity to address you this evening. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free. Um, anything further for Mr. White or Ms. Hale? Okay, not seeing any indication of that. Uh, council questions or first comments? So, uh, Mr. Keel, I have a few things here. Uh, first up is. Uh, uh, you were talking about the 2016 policy price, if you will, what we paid in 2016 and indicated that, uh, in fact, um, the, the amount that is covered, the amount of property, I guess, that is covered or perhaps I misunderstood, uh, went from 80 million roughly to 120 million. Do, do you want to confirm that for me? Do I understand you correctly that we ensure a lot more value at this point? Yes, they, uh, it, well, you go back to 2016, we, uh, there was the arena and the water treatment facilities have all been uh, upgraded. And uh, we went, went through a couple of um, processes that involve reevaluating the uh, cost to construct or replacement cost of each of the facilities or the buildings. And over the course of the last five years, that that value has increased to uh, to keep pace with what we understand would be the uh, cost to rebuild or reconstruct the facilities or the buildings. So we haven't felt that hit until this year, generally speaking. Is that the way to look at this? Uh, no, basically we, in 2017, uh, we put, put requests for proposals out and uh, the premium reduced significantly. Um, so if you took that, if you work that back to a dollar per thousand of insurance, um, and, and the rates really haven't changed a whole lot. It's just the fact that we've increased the coverage or the values. And, and if you use that premise and, and uh, work it back out at basically a 50% increase in the values, which would relate back to a 50% increase in premium uh, back to 2016 before the rates reduced significantly, we'd basically be at the same point today as what we were in 2016. If we were comparing apples to apples, being 128 million to 128 million in 2016. Okay. Um, Sorry, I, I might have confused you worse. I, I, I apologize for that. But. No, it's, it's, thank you, I appreciate the clarification. That's helpful. Yeah, my um, point just... basically was that, that uh, the premium, the rates haven't really changed um, from 2016 to 2021, although they took a significant reduction due to com competition in 2017. We just made basically worked our way back <laughs> to those 2016 rate levels. So. Okay, thank you. Um, my, I suppose my next question is, is uh, um, it may be naive, so I'm hoping you'll help me with this. Um, uh, we have a fairly low claims history as a municipality with regards to our insurance portfolio. Um, you would think that that would give us a fairly decent reputation with regards to insurance. Am I misunderstanding 
this in the context of why this there's a 20 percent increase at this point well no, good question mayor um, this is the dilemma that we've been facing within the insurance industry for the last two years is is that because of the competition that was introduced in a prime example would be going from 2016 uh, premiums to 2017 premiums where they reduced dramatically. Um, there was just a lot of premium taken off the table and, and that has simply caught up to the industry over the course of the last five years. And, and now there's been a correction um, as, as we go through the, uh, the natural disasters and not necessarily specifically um, as it relates to your claims experience, but it's just the overall claims experience of the uh, of, of this sector of insurance being the municipal and and the losses that uh, that a lot of them have seen. Um, we've been very fortunate here that we have not had claims experience. Uh, and and I'd, I'd be I'd be very concerned about what premiums we would have been facing if we did have a claims uh, uh, frequency concern, um, because there are a lot of municipalities that have faced that. So, but it is just it is really market driven at this point, and and hopefully we'll see that, uh, and and we'll have to be prepared as we were in 2016 to be able to to recognize the market as it is and take advantage of it uh, when it does become a little bit more competitive. Are we, sort of one more question here and then maybe a right comment. Um, are we in some kind of pool where our rate, because you talked about sort of rates for municipalities in general. And so does that mean that our, um, our insurance is factored into a pool that is in the municipal sector in Ontario or in southwestern Ontario or anything like that? Do I... Not not specifically, uh, just by the carriers, because there's there's not many carriers that uh, that uh, provide coverage to municipalities. There's there's uh, in, in this particular scenario, we received two uh, proposals. Um, there's probably four markets, and and so they they all look at their at their own portfolios and and how they're uh, how they're performing uh, from a claims perspective. Um, they in turn typically buy their liability insurance from uh, from the UK or from Lloyd's markets, and and they are. Uh, it becomes very small when you start looking because they would be providing uh, coverage to municipalities across across the country, across the continent, across the globe. It becomes a very global community very quickly when uh, when you start looking to the liability carriers that uh, the marshes or the intacts would be utilizing to uh, provide their programs. So I hope that answers you. Yeah. Question. Yeah, I, I, generally, I, I'll I'll muse that uh, you should have given me a tip in November of 2020 when the stock price for Marshall McLennan was $102. Today it was uh, it tapped out at $138. So they've seen a very healthy rise in their share price, and I take note of that um, when we talk about yes, the difficulties that insurers uh, are facing. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, I would like to think that we are coming out the other end of this tougher market and there are some indications that we are um, but I think it takes a little time for it to work its way through and and typically th that our, our industry is very cyclical because it does take uh, a couple of years for them to to realize that that uh, they need rate um, and it also takes them a couple of years to realize that that maybe it's time to become competitive again and that they they have the uh, capital and the where for all to 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 uh, become a little bit more competitive in the market. So so it is very cyclical as a result. So hopefully we will see that and we'll just have to be prepared to take advantage of that uh, if and when it happens. The share price looks pretty good today. Pardon me? So the share price looks quite good today. Yes, yes. Um, uh, sorry, who else? Councillor Seiler, do you have a question, comment? Thank you, Mayor Todd. Thank you, Tim, for your report. I guess I'm not too sure who this question is for, but I'm just wondering what their neighborly 
municipalities around us are going through at their uh, times of uh, renewing at this time. I have have spoke to Minto, uh, to a couple of their counselors, and they've jumped to Cowan because they've saved some money on some different loops, and I didn't really get into any conversation. So I just wondered what everybody else around us, if we have any information on how the, how compared they are or what's going on. Thank you. Uh, can anyone respond to that? Josh, do you, do you have any insight into um, regional differences? Uh, you know, now Tim may be able to speak to some of his other clients in general, not into specifics. Uh, you know, when we were looking at this landscape that we have coming ahead, it doesn't take much. Just knocking in a Google search engine, Ontario Municipalities Liability Insurances, in the last six months, you can find countless articles of different municipalities who are getting increases of about 50 to 120 percent. Um, actually, only found one that was around 20 percent, being Timmins, kind of going through uh, what we are, uh, and, and you can find a lot of uh, guess information regarding AMO and how they're looking at liability reform to to represent the municipalities. So uh, I think it's it's kind of an issue across the board, Tim. I don't know with your other clients if it's been the exact same thing. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, we that's what our experience has been. I've I've, I've seen and heard anywhere from 10% to over 60% increases in in this particular area. Um, we were fortunate. I reached out to uh, our representative at Marsh back in uh, February. Uh, because they obviously go through a number of, uh, of renewals in uh, January 1st, and they indicated that, that they were seeing some rate at that point, and that's when I reached out to Fran and Josh and suggested that we uh, would be wise for us to prepare for that because we knew that there would be some rate changes coming. At that stage, we certainly didn't know exactly what we were facing, but... Uh, but they were able to give us uh, an indication that there was a trend for increases across the board. So, so that's basically, from my understanding, what we've seen. So. Well, that's fine. I know it's. I know that uh, at different conferences that we go to, we always engage in some conversation and we talk to one another about in, in insurances and it's one of the top of the topics and whatnot. So, uh, I know it's it, it's changing every day and probably changing every month. So how long will this uh, be in for then, Tim, this, this policy? How long will it be? Well, this is a, it's a, it's a one year term. Um, and, and I don't think that there was a, a time back in 2016, 17, where they were offering uh, two year terms or rate guarantees, but, but we we're not seeing any of that right now. So it, it, we were dealing with a one year term. All right, thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. Anything else from Council? Okay, I have a resolution for consideration. It reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth award the General Insurance and Risk Management Services request for proposal number NP-001-21P to Marsh Canada Limited for a total cost of 257496 dollars excluding hst for a one year period uh deputy mayor kellum can i call on you to be the mover for that deputy mayor kellum okay let's Move down the list. Councillor Johnston, can I call on you to be the mover? Yes, I will step in in Deputy Mayor's place to move that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? I'll second that, yes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing anything. Council, I, I find myself disheartened by this trend in the in the, the market the insurance market and I, I i won't deny that i'm frustrated with this one 
As Councillor Seiler mentioned, uh, we go to meetings and certainly there's a lot of talk about the insurance subject and the need for insurance reform. And, and I think that uh, this issue uh, shouldn't die here. While it may be an essential that we have insurance in place, I think that uh, uh, we may wish to consider in our near future an opportunity to uh, send a statement uh, to the province on behalf of this council about the insurance rates and, and perhaps a reform to insurance for municipalities, depending on, on the sentiments of this council. So um, I, I find myself quite torn about this vote because I think that uh, something more needs to happen here. But uh, I will, uh, I suppose, uh, endorse this vote. I will vote in favor, but uh, with a certain amount of regret, I must admit. Anyone else have comments or questions before we call the vote? All right, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tim. We appreciate your service. Well, thank you very much for your time. And Josh, thank you for your work on this uh, file. We appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Okay, that allows us to uh, move to uh, item 5.6, reports from our manager of environmental services. Item 5.6.1 gives council an opportunity to weigh in on the selection of a new to us compactor for the municipal landfill in Elma. This matter includes a budget deviation and a single sourcing proposition, uh, two things we need to think about. So I'm gonna ask Mr. Hackett for his introduction to this matter. Welcome, Mr. Hackett. Mark, are you there? We're not hearing you. Is Mr. Hack with us, Kirk Kirkholtz? Sorry, are we good now? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, I'll, I'll continue. Um, North Perth purchased a, a used 1994 Caterpillar 816B landfill compactor in 2007, and that was purchased from Marcel Equipment. Um, in London, Ontario. Um, Marcel Equipment is a unique company in that uh, they specialize in reconditioning and rebuilding of landfill compactors and other um, landfill equipment. And they've been sourcing and reconditioning and remarketing used landfill compactors for the last 45 years. Um, these compactors are sourced from municipalities throughout North America and Europe. So on Wednesday, May 26th, uh, North Perth staff, including myself, uh, Fire Chief Ed Smith and our landfill equipment off operator Ryan Morrison uh, toured the equipment yard to look at some compactors. Uh, I would mention that our current model, the 816B, has been replaced with an 816F or 816K. Um, we looked at six compactors um, in total uh, and looked at them in detail. Um, we were able to narrow it down to three main um, candidates. And uh, I provided a chart there that kind of um, puts everything together for you. And not only does it look at the three that we were interested in, but it also compares it to um, the, if we were to purchase new. Um, so you can see the different years for each of the units. Uh, we looked at a 2007 816F. We looked at uh, two 2017 816Ks um, uh, at various price points. Uh, you'll note the trade-in value of 35000 for our um, current unit. And so you, that comes out with a net cost as listed below for the, for the three units. We'll see that a new unit, um, 816K, is approximately 800000 probably upwards of that as well. Um, and then what we did was we, we kind of looked more at an analysis based on hours because what we've learned is that um, a lot of, it's more important the hours than maybe the age of the machine. The hours that are put on it are more important. So what interested us in the 2007 model was that it was relatively low hours for a, for a model that old. Um, and it had 4,780 hours that between the two um, 2017 models, one of them had almost 7,000 hours and the other one had 3,225. So we looked at the estimated hours of life being 15,000 hours for all of them. That's based off 1,000 operational hours a year. 
And then we looked at how much uh, remaining hours of use we felt they had. And uh, we came up with, be able to come up with the cost per hour used and also the years of use based on the um, thousand hours per year. And um, the consensus was basically, and, and I should say that this is not by any means an exact science, it's just it was a way to try to analyze it. Um, and the consensus choice was the, the unit C2273, which was the 2017 um, 816K model that had the only, that had the low hours, the 3,225 hours. 816K models are 4,000 pounds heavier than 816F models, and they're actually 11,000 pounds heavier than our current compactor, which is the 816B. And um, heavier basically means better compaction, and better compaction means that we can extend the life of the landfill. Um, and that that's uh, something that is difficult to measure, but it's something of, of great value. Um, that compactor, the 2017 um, model, the C2273, is a four-year-old municipal unit, and it came out of Utah, and it still has some uh, CAT powertrain and hydraulic, hydraulics warranty uh, left on it and up, up until October 17th of 2021, and it also has Marcel equipment parts warranty until the end of this year. Um, now Pat's got a picture of the unit there. That's before any of the painting or any of the uh, upgrades or the, the work's been done on it. They do provide a, a detailed information of the inspection that done, is done by a CAT dealer and also by uh, all the work that would be done under warranty. And also they provide information that the, of the work that Marcel themselves will do. Um, then the unit can be ready in 30 to uh, 45 days, which is good. Um, we did have uh, council approved this um, capital budget for the purchase of $380,000. Um, we discussed this and staff felt that the low, really low hours on the, that unit are, are, um, are a good thing and that the remaining warranty also makes the purchase um, worth the additional $40,000. Uh, I, I believe Ed is with us. Um, I asked them to come along in case there are any more technical um, aspects or questions about the unit itself uh, or about our inspection that we did. Um, I do appreciate that he tagged along. He knows a lot more about the heavy equipment industry than I do, and uh, his, his um, input was invaluable. So I'd take any questions if there were any. Thanks, Mr. Hackett. Uh, Council, any questions or first comments about uh, this report? Hey, we're not seeing any, so I have Mr. Rothwell, please. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and uh, thank you, uh, Mark, for your report. Uh, I take it uh, that the issue of uh, uh, the warranty and so on uh, is transferable, even though this was uh, a unit of the states. There are some situations on automotive, for example, is that a vehicle that's uh, bought in the U.S. doesn't have the same coverage or, uh, in Canada, but uh, I take it you've explored that based on your comments, correct? Yes, the the a person from Marcel told us that, and he, I have it in an email that it's fully transferable to the municipality of North Perth. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Richardson is next. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Todd. I'm just wondering, like, with any used vehicles that are not of the heavy equipment variety, is price negotiable, or is the sticker price what it is? Or, but I'm only just if they ask four fifty-five, and there's your trade-in. Is it just a signed document, or can you say, will you take four and a quarter for it, or a savings or a savings? Do they do that in this industry? Yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor Richardson. I did ask about that, if uh, there was any room for negotiation on the price. Basically, uh, there isn't. He explained it as they, as they used to do um, the Kia, or not Kia, Saturn cars. Uh, the price that is on the window is the price that you pay, um, and they don't have any room for any negotiation on these units. A lot of it's really based off the hours um, of the unit and, and, the, and the expected lifetime of the machine. Okay, thank you. 
Oh, you're making me reminisce about my Saturn in the late 90s there, Mark. Thank you for that. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we have a resolution then uh, reads as follows that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve the single source purchase of unit number C2273 from Marcel Equipment in the amount of 420,000 plus applicable taxes. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum, can I call on you to be the mover? He, as he left the meeting. Okay. Uh, so, Councillor Seiler, can I call on you to be the mover? I will gladly move that. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, so I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? Let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor, we are having a hard time reaching you, I guess, by the audio at this point. Um, if there's a way you can call in to uh, participate, uh, please avail yourself of that. That can work. All right, uh, next up then, uh, thank you, um, Mark and team for the report. Uh, we have no reports from our operations or fire department tonight. Uh, that brings us then to item six on our agenda. For item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports I'd like to ask of staff or our committees to request that opportunity uh, to speak? Please so indicate in the chat feature of our web conferencing tool. Anything for 6.1, any report requests? We're not seeing anything. The deputy mayor has advised he will uh, rejoin the meeting, uh, give it another try. So uh, we'll move forward then. We have received no additional items of correspondence beyond that that was shared in the consent agenda for council's disposition. That brings us to item eight on our agenda, which allows council to consider enact bylaws. As item 8.1, we have proposed, uh, we have a proposed bylaw authorizing the acquisition of lands for the primary purpose of a stormwater management pond on Walton Avenue North. We heard a little bit about that earlier, I believe. Are there any questions or concerns from councillors before the bylaw resolution? Okay, uh, seeing uh, none at this point, uh, I have the resolution for consideration that bylaw number 58-2021 being a bylaw uh, to Authorize, there's a typo in here, uh, the acquisition of land be introduced read and considered to read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Anstead, would you serve as mover? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Councillor Behrens, will you serve as seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? And let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. That'll How's my go. audio now? Yeah, we can hear you. Wonderful. So, yeah, sorry about that, Mayor Todd. I'm back on. Welcome back. <laughs> um, uh, we're at item nine on our agenda now. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion this evening? We're not seeing anything. That brings us to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? Uh, please uh, queue up in the web chat function and I'll call on you in the order presented. Uh, looks like uh, Ms. Gangle, why don't you start? Thank you. Uh, yes, just want to celebrate a couple of events that we are um, uh, partnering or being part of in the community. So the virtual character run is currently happening and it will run until June 27th. 
Uh, it is virtual. All individuals are permitted to uh, walk or run um, for a distance uh, as a fundraiser for the character run. Currently, we have 241 registrants, so it's, uh, it's a very well-received event, and it's really nice to see everyone's pictures being posted on social media to celebrate uh, community character. The second is our virtual teddy bear play day. It is running until June 19th. It started on June 1st, and uh, we've partnered the um, library, the early on, and the recreation program staff have partnered and collaborated to make this another successful event. And we've actually had some of our young citizens last weekend stop by at the Atwood and Moncton Library to pick up their play day activity bags. And this Saturday, uh, we'll be available to pick up in the at the Listwell branch. So if anyone's interested, they can register to be able to do a curbside pickup to pick up an activity play day bag. So take a look at that. We are celebrating a lot of our previous sponsors from our historic event, um, and our businesses are actually sharing their teddy bears. So it's a, it's a really nice way to be able to celebrate our community and have some fun. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. And, and um, my uh, teddy bear is uh, Taz from the Tasmanian Devil. I think you've seen him before and he'll make an appearance as part of the teddy bear festivities. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Andreessen is next. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I feeling quite optimistic about our community. I feel that uh, the recent announcement by the province in terms of reopening of business as of this um, Saturday, June the 11th will be quite promising for our community and I wish our businesses all the best as they, you know, begin their, their uh, new steps for reopening. I know there'll be, you know, continued restrictions, but we wish them all the best and certainly hope our community continues to support them for a very healthy business community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen, and um, I'm happy to advise that um, uh, the Outwood Lions are uh, gearing up for Canada Day 2021, uh, largely virtual again this year, but a decent program, including a continuation of the Outwood Rocks theme that emerged last year. Uh, for Council's uh, interest, uh, I've sold a few tickets to you already, uh, but the tickets are available from me. Uh, for the pork chop barbecue supper, which is on July 1st from 5, there's, there's it's a takeout dinner, 5, 5.30, and 6 o'clock time slots. And uh, so we'll be uh, supporting that. And uh, I'm also pleased to announce the second year of the craft float parade, which I uh, co collaborated with uh, Ms. Gangle on last year and was uh, quite successful. So councillors, get your, your art skills and your tape and your construction paper out and uh, bring on your floats. Uh, it's going to be an interesting second round of uh, floats for our community, and I invite your uh, participation. I know several of you last year participated, and it was, uh, it was good fun to see. So appreciate that. Uh, any other announcements from the community? Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, uh, Mayor Todd. Very exciting news, uh, everyone. Uh, just want to share, uh, oh, it's also exciting. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Becky Belfour and other staff are meeting with Vice Budget Vice Chair and myself to start our uh, review to uh, get uh, prepared for our budget uh, uh, process. So we're uh, looking forward to that tomorrow. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, on a personal note, our youngest daughter is getting married in a drive-in uh, wedding this coming Saturday. So the announcement that uh, things have opened up ever so slightly for that are great news. It'll be a drive-in wedding and it's up uh, just outside of Rocks or on a farm for her fiance, Travis Stewart and Ann Rothwell. Well, on behalf of council, much congratulations. Uh, I, the, the province has given you a little blessing there or something. Or something. Yeah, or something. That's a good news story. Uh, our best to the bride and groom. And um, yes, let's uh, continue to build this community. Thank you so much, councillors. Anyone else with, uh, with any announcements? Okay, that brings us to item 11 on our agenda. We have four matters before us to be considered in a closed session. Um, I will read the resolution that explains and enables our actions. 
uh, uh, to enter closed session here. And uh, the resolution reads as follows, that this committee proceed in camera at 9.36 p.m. to address uh, matters pertaining to, uh, one, a proposed or pending acquisition sale of land for municipal or local board purpose regarding the North Perth Public Library's Moncton branch and property described as lots 52, three and four, plan 382 North Perth, Elma Street. Two, security of the property of the municipality or local board regarding property located at 29 McDonald Street West in Listville. And three, litigation or potential litigation regarding, uh, in, sorry, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the corporation or local board regarding LPAT case PL200461. Can I call on uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for this one? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan, will you be our seconder for that? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Okay, let's have that vote. And it's, there we go, that's carried. A little bit of a delay there, that's carried. So council, we are uh, temporarily out of uh, session for the purposes of our closed meeting. Uh, those who've been invited to remain for the closed meeting, please stay on this call. If you haven't been invited, then it's time for you to exit. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, Simon is with us in the chamber to help us reset the AV so that we're not broadcasting our closed proceedings and uh,
Um, Matt Richardson, are you able to see if we're on YouTube and casting at this point? Okay, oh, we're back. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, that brings us to uh, agenda item number 12, which is an opportunity for council to report from its closed meeting. There are no reports to be made to the public at this time. Um, council has a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. I have the draft of same here for our consideration reads as follows that bylaw number 67-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the council of the municipality of North Perth be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councilor Richardson, can I call on you to be our mover for that one? I'll move that, thank you. Thank you, and Councilor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? I'll second the motion, yes. Thank you. Um, do we have e-scribes still up, uh, Pat, or are we? Okay, so this is just a manual vote then. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, are there any opposed? Please indicate in some way, smoke signals, note in the chat box, whatever. And I'm not seeing any, so that is carried. Thank you. And uh, councillors, that means we've com completed all the deliberation and taken action on the business that did come before us tonight. I have a motion to adjourn that reads as follows. That this council meeting adjourns at 10.43 p.m to meet again for general council business on Monday, June 14th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this one? I will move that, thank you. Thank you, Good night. Councillor, thank you. Andreessen. Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that. Thank you, it's not debatable, so are there any opposed? Seeing none, that's carried, Council. Um, we are again meeting uh, on this channel uh, using digital technologies on Monday, the 14th. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your patience. Good night, all. Good night.